Kakoa Pau, Kaiopua 5, with you again from the Kiwani Foundation with Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. And once again, coming to you from the palace grounds from Maui, pleased to have with us again, a brother who we've uh, had a pleasure of interviewing several times, Kaumoku Kapu. Welcome, Kaumoku. Hi. Mahalo for being Hi. with us. Hi. Aloha. Thank you so much. Every opportunity is a great one to get together. And it looked to me like uh, kind of brought the Maui mana with you today. I mean, <laughs> I, you got quite a quite an entourage or quite a group of folks come over. Yeah. But sure. you came over for other meetings, and maybe we can talk about that too as sure. we get in. You know, the the videos now for Voice of Truth. You know, they go throughout all the public access in Hawaii, and also several uh, public access venues in America. But all of our tapes now are going up on uh, the internet and people can watch them 24 sevens anytime they just go up and pick them. So uh, a lot of the people who will be watching may not have, may not be familiar with you. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to give you, if you could give us a you know, kind of a brief background on yourself, you know, what got you interested in what you're doing and kind of bring us up to what we really want to talk about. And that is what you want to talk about, whatever sure. the issues are with sure. you. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess um, the easiest way to start this is uh, a lot of people on Maui, the place where I'm from, uh, in Lahaina, uh, sort of know me as being uh, kind of boisterous in the community and the things that I've done in the past based upon a lot of um, adverse effects on our lives and my, my family's lives where we live. So from that, uh, I decided to sort of dive a little bit deeper in the political realm and sitting on different types of commissions. I served in the past on our Maui County Cultural Resources Commission. I right now presently serve as the Maui Lanai Island Borough Council Commission. I am also the chair of the Native Hawaiian Star Preservation Council. That's sort of an advisory to the Board of Trustees for Office of Hawaiian Affairs. I also sat on Westpac as an advisory panelist uh, to go over certain things about uh, traditional management on resources, on traditional gathering rights for the benefit of Native Hawaiians. And, you know, it's, the reasons why I got on is to understand these covenances and codes so I can sort of balance myself out in life because I'm a Kanaka Maoli and I. My foundation is the, the aina that I live on and to cope with uh, the Western concepts of different things that come, it's kind of hard to be a Kanaka, just wanting to live the life as a Kanaka or a Mahiai, to grow taro and to get sustenance from the resources, the bountiful resources that basically is our right and at the same time not understand the political kinds of things, mm -hmm. I decided to dive in the pot. Well, you mentioned a couple of things that some people might not be aware of. OHA is the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And Westpac is that Western Pacific Fisheries yeah, Western Management, Fisher, Manage, yeah. Management Council. So uh, you're out in the ocean resources, your resources on the land. And you didn't mention, but uh, you've been a cultural practitioner for a long time. I mean, we participated together in uh, uh, some of the Lua, Lua stuff. So, I mean, it goes back maybe several years, but I mean, pretty much well-rounded as a, a committed cultural practitioner, which I guess is what uh, really gives you the background to go into these areas. The difference is that instead of the cultural approach or the Kanaka approach, if you're trying to learn how to relate to some of the things we're subjected to under yeah. OHA or the state government or, or these uh, fisheries management councils that have all these rules and regulations and, and that have a huge impact on us. Yeah. And yeah. if we can't understand them, we're in trouble. Yeah, and it's, I would say that's basically how this whole thing started was the Palua in 1993 with Richard Puglina one, mm -hmm. Moses Kalau Kalani, mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Walker, um, you know, Eli Mitchell. Mm -hmm that they gave us an opportunity to understand our inner self, mm -hmm. to know what it was like in the in Kavakaiko in the old days as pertaining to Hawaiian warriorism. But, and the male role. Yeah. Huh? 
Yeah. The male role. That's that, that's what that leadership. That's what I think has been missing. One of the things that makes it so difficult for a Kanaka Hawaiian male is it's kind of like they've been cut loose from everything that used to anchor us, huh? Yeah. And so that that kind of developed that that anchor became that anchor. Yeah, it gave it sort of it really gave me a, a self pride and a, and re allowed me to recapture my identity as as a Kanaka living in today's so-called pathetic society, I call mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So it gave me an identity to focus on based upon the direction that I needed to go next. So, you know, Kavamamua, yeah? Mm -hmm. The future is in the past, but we have to really understand what the past is all about. Mm -hmm. Then when we step in the realm of what we're living today, we can, we can more absorb pertaining to how we need to, or how we force to live in two worlds at mm -hmm. the same time. Yeah. So that's the, I guess that's one of the, the complicated reasons. And the reason why I use complicated is because we know we have these things that is for our benefit, but where is it? Where mm. is it written? Where is mm. it drawn on the uh, dotted line? How do we fit? Yeah, yeah. So, we, so I got involved in the County Cultural Resources Commission and I started understanding these, these so-called rules uh, under uh, an ordinance called 343, which identifies our character and identity as a cultural indigenous uh, people of, of the state of Hawaii, the so-called state of Hawaii. Right, right. Then in the Barrow Council, they have all these uh, covenants and rules that talk about Section 6E and 13-300. I need to absorb those kinds of things for the protection of our Ibi Kupuna when they start development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the West Pacific Fisheries Management Council, it gave me an opportunity to fly to Guam, Saipan, and Rota mm -hmm. to share with the people in Guam about how important the traditional management is because that is sort of a protective um, basis for indigenous people to continue their practice. If they don't continue their practices, mm -hmm. their traditions, and they're going to lose it under the covenants of law. Use it or lose it, right? Yeah. All right. Then being involved right now at this present time, I'm the chair for the Native Hawaiian and Stark Preservation Council. We take on all these different kinds of issues on development, burials, uh, historic preservations of certain sites that is considered highly historic in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. It's a 13 uh, board commission. And we look at, you know, how this commission would benefit Native Hawaiians through education, through, through historical preservation and we also start talking about political kinds of things i mean my last meeting that we had we talked about the akaka bill and how uh, they need to create some kind of uh, due process for the, the people of hawaii to have some kind of fair consensus as to whether or not the mm -hmm. bill would be beneficial for us or not yeah you know at the international level they call that uh, free informed prior consent you know, free and informed, it means that you are, you're in on from the very beginning of the discussions and that if there's any consent, you've got to be a part of that, that discussion. It's like uh, you're mentioning the Cocker Bill. I mean, I've, gone, I've even gone to D.C. many times to try to express my opinion. Uh, but one of the things we really think is required, we know is required, is they've got to come back here. Yeah. You know, this bill has been drafted in D.C. It's been discussed in D.C. Nobody here had any opportunity to provide any input. Ten years ago, and they disregarded, the, you know, the, the opposition that we had to it. Yeah, I, I read the bill. It yeah. was, it, I pulled it up online, and I read it verbatim. I yeah. stayed up till, like, 3 o'clock at night. Right. And, you know, I feel sorry for my wife because every time I came across something on a bill that I didn't like, I woke her up rudely. Oh, listen to this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but so, it, just, it just angered me yeah. the fact that, you know, one of the first requirements under the bill is to be a part of the so-called political entity, you would have to be a United States citizen. Yeah. That's the requirement. Yeah. Then it, it gets even more in-depth when it talks about... Uh, how DHHL under the 1920 Act yeah. plays a huge part pertaining to the identity mm -hmm. of a Native Hawaiian. Yeah, Department of Hawaiian Homeland. Yeah. Talking so about. you're talking about, now you're talking about blood quantum. Mm -hmm. 
But then when you when you hear the discussions that they had with certain individuals on this these TV program, they said, oh, blood has nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. But there's an act that was created that talks about our blood quantum. In 1978, during Hiram Fong's time, before the Constitutional Convention, the legislation also voted on the 50% blood quantum, yeah, as a, as a management or a security to make sure that these advisories that would be given the, supplemented the money from the ceded land revenues, that those monies are to be used for the native Hawaiian beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, all those kinds of things. I mean, people can talk about, no, everybody's gonna benefit on this, but if there's acts that was mm -hmm. actually implemented in the past, plus mm -hmm. the, the Hawaii State Constitution, which literally says in there that there is a definition, then how can they, the, the Akaka Bill you know, say that it's not. Mm -hmm. I mean, we gotta look at all these little things, and it, it just it just upsets me to the point as to where now it's it's total coercion, mm -hmm. and I don't like it. And I hope that I really hope that you know, for Congress, for them to even enact or do something about this, besides signing this thing, is like selling the cow with no milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah to create a fair process for Native Hawaiians to come and have a general consensus for them to go to all the outer, the outer islands and, yeah. and and hear from the people. Yeah, how public they hearings, about that. public yeah, hearings. public hearings. Yeah. I agree with that. Uh, we had some discussions over the past couple of days with uh, various people and it's amazing who supports uh, exactly that, you know. Uh, this is not a slam dunk thing. Even some people who have supported the Cocker Bill Say, wait a minute, what's being pulled at the last minute? Mm -hmm. Because they didn't get any input into this amended language that now goes on. And I'm understanding that in the state legislature, there may be some bills come forward that make a recommendation that hearings do come here, you know, that hearings come here. Uh, also heard that uh, there may be a call for a, a managerial and economic uh, audit full of, of Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Mm -hmm. You know, what's been happening with these $11 million that they committed to promote the Sakaka bill that none of us had any input into. So, okay. so hoping that comes about, I, I'm hopeful that uh, maybe the bill is not going to be passed again, you know, been 10 years. And with good reason, uh, I'm hoping that we get some more time, get some hearings back here so we can discuss it. Well, all of these commissions, you know, that you've been uh, gotten yourself involved in, you know, I know what it's like. I mean, first thing you do is you show up. And then if you start asking questions and you start looking for answers, then you start writing up re with responsibilities, mm -hmm. right? Yep. All you got to show up and ask a question and somehow you get a kuleana out of the thing. You get a yep. responsibility. And so you've, you've gotten yourself in that position, but they all kind of interlink though uh, yeah. and overlap. You, yeah. you mentioned going to Guam and uh, up in that area. I know we were in uh, Northern Marianas. You, maybe you got up there too, yeah. Saipan and up in there. And uh, one thing we talked with them about was their relationship. They're a commonwealth, I think. Or no, they have a compact of free association, I think. Essentially, they thought they had, a, uh, in uh, Northern Marianas, they thought they had a good understanding of what they were entitled to. But it only came out a couple of years ago that their interests only go out into the shallow waters, you know, or the high water line, I guess, and that the U.S. was actually negotiating the rights, the ocean rights away com for commercial purposes. Yeah. You know? So you got to be constantly vigilant, constantly looking at this stuff. Um, and for you to be able to get around and see all of this and, and you know, offer Hawaii's perspective is tremendous. But you know what, what happens when you keep increasing your level of responsibility as you, you're, you're a spokesperson for communities and you're, you're a spokesperson in, in certain areas. Have you given any thought to maybe uh, running for elected office? I mean, for appointed office or, you, I mean, you're already on commission, but it's almost natural that you yeah. go to another level. 
Yeah, it just so happens, you know, after we did the Ka'apuni march around Maui, when we walked uh, with the torch around Maui, one of the biggest impacts that we came across our family, you know, with the with the with the light of a flame and just just going the extra distance of what we did, I I took it within. Well, our family took it within ourselves to to go around the islands again and get a general consensus from the community and mm -hmm. sort of give back for what what had happened at that time. Mm -hmm. Then it it just dawned on me and said, you know what, I. I've been in that so-called realm, and a lot of times I always, I always have to ask myself when I'm sitting at the commissions, what am I doing here? What is my right. purpose? Right. But it was not until after the torch march, I realized I really realized that how much the, the kamaaina out there, just the regular makaaina, right, right, and how they were in dire, desperate need of help. Well, so I decided. And they need a voice. They need a voice. Yeah. So I decided at that moment. You know, right now in time, I didn't put it out there yet, but I may as well now that I'm running for the Maui, uh, West Maui Council representative uh, for the Lahaina District. Wonderful. Good. Yeah. To me, I think that's a natural progression. Uh, you know, what was it, the Makahiki March that you folks made? Yeah. Was it last year? Yeah. Yeah, last Makahiki. And I mean, it was, what a way to confirm feet on the land and communities joining in and all the way around the island and back. Yeah, it was it was really good that, you know, every district we went to, every moku we went to, we was welcomed with open arms. There mm. was there was uh, Melekahea, Melekomo, there was some response here in a right. culturalistic way. Sure. So out of, you know, going back in the, the past by rediscovering ourselves on how the past would help benefit our society today, mm -hmm. you know, that's one of the reasons you know, like for me, I said, hey, you know what? I gotta do something because we mm -hmm. can't just say we're gonna walk around the island as an accomplishment. Yeah. This thing still has, the fire is still lit and it still has to continue on for the next millennium or, or, or as long as it takes. Yeah. So I you know, I feel strongly that, you know, Hawaiians need to find a political role in, in, in their society today. Either yeah. that or, you know, just lay back and do nothing about yeah. it. But when we do those kinds of things, and things happen without us knowing anything. Yeah. They're supposed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that march, what the march does, you call it a walk around the island, but this, this thing went on for days. Yeah. And people joined in, people dropped off, people joined in. And it was quite a commitment, but I think what it probably showed exactly was people need that kind of participation and they need to be represented and they need that voice. So. Good luck to you. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hoping you can uh, be successful in it. If you're not the first time, don't be surprised. But mm -hmm. it, this is an ongoing commitment. Huh? Yeah. This is an ongoing commitment. And I never give up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No matter where the road yeah. is going to take me, yeah. you know, I'm just a vessel. Somebody else is driving yeah. a car. Yeah. That's what I think a lot of people recognize is, uh, you know, there, there, there's actually something you're being pushed forward and you just kind of go along and help to make things happen, you know? And it's something that I think uh, we couldn't uh, talk so freely about several years ago because everybody was kind of going like this. Yeah. I think we're, there's major change happening. And I think everybody's realizing, whoa, we got to work together and we're going to have our differences, but that can't stop us, you know? We, we make those differences uh, make us more strong, but yeah, I'm seeing more collaboration and, and unifying and it's positive, very positive to me. Uh, activities this weekend, you know, are, are even more reinforcing that. So, you know, people who weren't talking to each other before are now sitting down and, and talking things out, you know? Yeah. And, and differences aren't that big when you can sit down and spend time with people, you know? Sometimes you find out you're really talking about the same thing and the same solutions, but you're using different words or you come from a different background that, you know, makes it seem different. Well, it has a lot to do with the educational component with the Department of Education. Uh, you know, these furloughs right now, does it worsen our situation to be, mm -hmm. be as one as a community? It's, I mean, it starts with our children. You know, and I feel strongly that, you know, if legislation or that Wahine upstairs, Linda Lingo, have put us in, the, in this predicament, then they should be working every day, Saturdays and Sunday, to get us out of this mess. Yeah, well, you know, if you get in a bind, or if your family gets in a bind, uh, you don't just say, 
well, this is too much to deal with. Let's just take a couple days off. I mean, everybody gets in and starts digging harder. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Ho'oponopono in so many ways, yeah, man. Yeah. I don't, you know, I, I read an article from the uh, Secretary of uh, Department of Education in D.C. when these furloughs came up. You know, people around the country, all around the United States were talking about it. Hawaii is cutting the days in class, classroom days. And, you know, it seemed to me from what the Department of uh, Education was saying is there's all kinds of funding available, federal funding available, to take care of this educational shortfall. Somebody never signed up for it, you know? Huh. And, that, and that's, that's a crime, that's a crime. Not to pursue that too much, but let me ask you, what's happening on Maui? Uh, what, what do the kids do on Friday, and what do the parents do who got two or three or four jobs that they got to take care of. Where, where, where do the kids go? They, they, they literally, you know, it's, it's a Hawaiian concept too, yeah. When one family is in trouble, the other family is always there to kick in. Like my kids, they got to mm. work, yeah. Right. And my nephews and nieces, you know, if they're off on Friday, then they're going to auntie's house. Okay. Uh. There is there's there is some programs that they're trying to put together, yeah, for like after schools and mm -hmm. but there's this furlough Friday, the programs of furlough Fridays so right. the kids can go so the parents can go work. Right. Those kind of things I th I think the state needs to really take into consideration. If the parents have to take on Friday then how the money gonna come in. Exactly. You know, everything affects each other's lives, mm -hmm. but like for mm -hmm. the Hawaiian concept, you know, one family is in trouble, hey bring your kids over here. Yeah. Yeah. We know you gotta mm -hmm. make make do with uh, uh, putting mail eye on the table, then that's when, that's when you see the commonality of how the Ohana concept mm -hmm. works. Everybody work together yeah, in kaku, time of need. Kaku. Yeah, mm -hmm. so in time of need, and despite we getting all this pili care from the state level and the county level, or what it does, from mm -hmm. the politics side, mm -hmm. as a community, we know how to survive. Taking care of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what interests, and I'm asking you that because uh, you come to exactly the point that I have. When you look at the people who aren't Hawaiian, who aren't in the community, who do not have a broad Ohana base of support, it's tough on them. Mm -hmm. They don't let it, you know, their auntie may be in Colorado. Yeah. So they're the ones looking around, where can I, where can I drop the kids, you know? Uh, one of the schools on Kauai, a private school, uh, well, when the when the four low Fridays came on, the phone was ringing off the hook. Can we bring our kids by and drop them off right here? You know, those are people who don't have that broad base of support. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested that you you gave kind of the answer that I figured you were going to, and that's how Ohana just picks up the slack. Yeah, you know, just picks it up. That's fantastic. Forgetting about the village concept. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah, yeah. and you know, like for uh, people that from outside that has that can't find the village concept. We call them the Haloa concept. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, Hawaiians have a terminology, simple terminology, and it's called Hanai. Mm -hmm. yeah, if the Malahini gets involved in the community or the village that they in, the mm -hmm. people would Hanai that person, would That's Hanai right. the yeah. children. Yeah. I get plenty of kind, um, they call them Hapa. Mm -hmm. I get plenty of Hapa nephews and nieces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, they part of the Ohana now. Sure. Sure. It's just the community and how we, we shouldn't segregate ourselves by putting fences across our, our, our property. Right. That was never our concept. When we start doing that, then we start thinking we got to take care of us, don't worry about them. They're yeah. responsible for themselves. That was yeah. never the concept yeah. before. Yeah. So in time of need, because of the political regime's thing, it's for our benefit. The, the village comes together and definitely knows yeah. how to. That's an important message. I think there are a lot of people out here in Hawaii who are just in that situation. And all they really have to realize, they just need to become a part of the community. That means give and, you know, give and take when you need, but give when you can. You know? yeah. so, so they'll get an opportunity. And I hope that all works out. Well, we're kind of winding our time down. Uh, we've got just a brief amount of time. Is there any single thing that you want to say or communicate to the folks who are listening before we sign off? Any single thing that sums up who you're about and what you're going to do. I mean, your campaign, I, I totally back you. Maybe I can't vote on Maui, but yeah. <laughs> I got friends I can talk to over there. You know? Well, I'm, I'm just one small voice, and with this one small voice, hopefully I can um, send a message out there from the people that, that uh, really want to see some kind of change for the benefit of our future generations tomorrow. 
Well, mahalo for sharing with us. Mahalo for coming oh. and being with us again. Mahalo. We'll be talking with you many more times in the, yes. in the future. And we want to thank those of you who are out there watching, wherever in the world you may be. If you're in Hawaii, this is particularly pertinent. If you're elsewhere in the world, it's still very important because when we're talking about family, community, basic rights and concepts and the environment, it applies everywhere. I'm Kyle Hua Fife with the Kiwani Foundation, Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future, a component of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network. Mahalo and anui lo, uh, mahalo and uh, ahui ho. Aloha. Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.